There are few unfinished fantasy series that have gained as much anticipation for their conclusion as The King Killer Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss, other than A Song of Ice and Fire. The Name of the Wind came out way back in 2007, with its sequel The Wise Men's Fear continuing the story in 2011. Now of course, the third book, everybody knows, has yet to see the light of day. Progress has been slow, but it's not all been quiet. Lately, Rothfuss has been speaking more in live streams about the point he's writing right now, involving an undead Barrow King, which I made a full video on, and he even read the prologue to Book 3 in a live stream, which I also made a video analyzing and going over some of the new info that connects with some popular fan theories. Not only this, but he promises to read a full chapter from Book 3 soon, and you can bet I'll be covering that in a video as well, so make sure to subscribe. I know, another King Killer video. I, I've been making a lot of these lately, so I apologize to my audience that doesn't care about the King Killer Chronicle. Be patient, I will make videos on other things, but also the King Killer videos are not gonna stop. Today we're talking about a King Killer Chronicle adaptation. I will briefly go over the adaptation that was going to be that's no longer a thing. I'm also gonna talk about what I think the challenges are going to be in adapting this series and why I think it's not actually suited for an adaptation. But let's be honest, it's probably going to be adapted at some point, so I also will talk about the things that I think they need to nail uh, in order to have a successful adaptation. But I also want to hear from you in the comments on what you want to see from a King Killer Chronicle adaptation. Do you want to see a series of movies, or a TV show, or an animated series? Maybe you already have ideas for casting. I don't really. I have no clue who I would cast. Danny DeVito as Elodin, obviously. Now first, let me thank the sponsor of this video, Boksu. Boksu is a Japanese snack subscription that sends authentic gourmet Japanese snacks and tea from Japan straight to your door. They even offer free shipping to the US, by the way. Every box has its own theme, so the contents are going to be different, and the box that I have here is the Sakura Spring Box. Inside every box, you get this pamphlet that has all the snacks and teas. It gives you the flavor profile, as well as tells you what region of Japan it comes from. Boksu is kind of the perfect holiday gift to give to a loved one. They get a try snacks from Japan and they're delicious. I'm trying gobo chips. I don't know what those are. Fried and coated in spicy cod roe flavoring. Okay, well, I love spicy stuff. I could definitely see myself eating a bag of these. Now I just don't want to stop. If you want to see all the snacks in this box, me and my girlfriend are going to film a separate video on our vlog channel where we try all of these. Yeah, they're little hearts. How cute. Now you can use my code captured in words 10 or use the link in the description to get 10% off your own authentic Japanese subscription from Boxu. Thanks again to Boxu for sponsoring this video. Now there was plans for a multi-adaptation. Back in 2015, Lionsgate bought the rights to the King Killer Chronicle and the original premise was to adapt the books into a trilogy of movies and then expand the world with a video game and a prequel TV series following the nomadic traveling performers known as the Adema Rue and Lynn manuel Miranda, the legend behind Hamilton, who's also a big fan of the books and a friend of Pat's, was going to be working on the music for it. And honestly to me, the fact that Lynn manuel Miranda was going to be part of it was kind of the only real exciting thing about it. I mean, the, the prequel show is what they seem to be making the most headway with, and to me it's just kind of a prequel that nobody asked for. Why tell a different story if the reason for the adaptation is the original story that all of us love. And Rothfuss wouldn't even be the one writing the prequel, so that just, it doesn't seem that exciting to me. It would have familiar elements, but it would be a brand new story without our protagonist. And you know, it was probably just an idea to give Rothfuss more time to finish the third book. I guess it would have been nice to see how Arladin met Kvothe's mother, uh, but I, I was just more excited for how Miranda handled the music. But now, we recently had news that Lin-Manuel Miranda confirmed that he's no longer attached to this project, and the production company company has backed out, so the adaptation is back up on the market, uh, and that's probably a good thing. Personally, I'd like to see the third book released before we see anything on screen. The one thing I find tragic about this is that Miranda had already written some songs for the show. He wrote a song about Lady Lackless, and he also wrote a version of the Chandrian rhyme, and now I just, I really want to hear them. 
petition for these to get released. Okay, so that's the history of the adaptation that could have been, but now I want to talk about my thoughts. There's a few reasons why I think the King Killer Chronicle is just not suited for TV or movies. Now, a lot of the action of the story actually takes place in the main character's head, and that's not really going to translate well to the screen. I feel like Ender's Game is a good example of how this was done kind of poorly. Quoth's noble actions may make him appear like a hero, but his internal thoughts is what makes him appear human. While you're reading, you begin to understand that he's actually really flawed, and in many cases, he's not actually this hero that he makes himself out to be. Another big thing that's not going to translate well is all of the clues, the foreshadowing, the wordplay, all the small little details that Rothfuss puts into the language of his books. A lot of the small hidden details rely on the writing itself, and they're pretty important for what's to come. For instance, take the rhyme about Lady Lackless, or the Lackless Door, or even some of the things that the Cathay says, there's a lot of hidden things in those words, and I think that's going to be a difficult thing to bring to the screen. Now the essence of the King Killer Chronicle is in its poetic language and the written music, and I think that's going to be really difficult to bring to TV. There's no way to write the songs in the same way that the book describes them. No one's going to be satisfied with Tinker Tanner, or especially Sir Savian. The Lay of Sir Savian is a notoriously difficult song within the world of the King Killer Chronicle, and it was an incredibly emotional scene when Quoth finally won his Talon Pipes playing this song. There's even parts of the book that aren't songs, but are often lyrical, in ways that are most likely very meaningful. For instance, the metered verses with Denna, or the rhyming phrases with Felurian. Or there's even a few cases where Quoth just starts speaking in verse. The music in these books is such a big part of what the series is, and it's perfect because it's all in words. If it doesn't capture the spirit of Temerant, it can completely break the immersion, and not to mention, musical taste is just so varied. One thing I do want to mention, though, is that I love Miranda, but everything he does kind of sounds similar to Hamilton, and that's definitely not the vibe that I feel like fits with the King Killer Chronicle. So as amazing as he is, maybe he wouldn't have been the right fit? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Now, one of the things I feel like they would need to keep in adaptation would be the narration of Quoth in the Waystone Inn. He could be narrating the story as it transitions into a scene from his past. Now, like I mentioned, his inner thoughts are going to be hard to translate, but the show Dexter proves that inner monologues can actually work really well in cinema. I'm surprised that more book adaptations refuse to utilize it, because including some inner monologue can help overcome the biggest hurdles of adapting a book into a movie. And I feel like this is a series where we have the perfect excuse for inner monologue, because he's telling the story. Now, I've heard from a lot of fans that they want King Killer animated. Uh, there's actually a fan-made animation animation by Ethan Becker, which is totally awesome. I could definitely see the King Killer Chronicle with this type of art style, and I think it would be incredible. But also, this isn't really a series that would significantly benefit from animation. Series like the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson or The Wheel of Time, I think would do much better with an animated series. The world in the Stormlight Archive is so alien, just the production cost of all the effects and the set design would be insane. And I I think animation would give complete freedom in bringing that world to life. But the world of Temerant is fairly low magic. Yes, there's the Fae, and maybe naming could be a bit difficult in bringing to the screen, but I think it's possible. If the Wheel of Time show can figure out how to show weaves, then I'm sure the Name of the Wind can figure out how to show naming. That's not a good example. The Wheel of Time show should not be used as an example. Scratch what I said. But you know what I mean, like I don't think this series necessarily benefits a lot from animation. I think there's a lot of other series out there that would do better in animated form. If they did decide to animate it though, I would not complain. Let me know what you think, would you prefer animation or live action? In my previous video, which was a long discussion on the name of the wind with my girlfriend Katie, she brought up a really good point about the beginning of the name of the wind. If this was going to be a TV show, there's going to be multiple, multiple episodes spent in Tarbian. 
Uh, first, you're gonna see, you know, his parents get murdered, and then there's gonna be all this time spent in Tarbian. Viewers are gonna be subject to a lot of trauma and seeing this poor boy being beaten, lighting another child on fire, and living on the street, and they're not gonna really know where the story is going. And I think that is a good point to consider. That's why I think they need to keep the narration in the Waystone Inn, and you know, maybe when Quoth is starting up the story with Chronicler, when he does his three false beginnings, it will give some flashbacks to some times at the university, and some other future events before diving back into his childhood and the, the tragedy. As for what I would like to see, I don't really want a trilogy of movies. Unless it is like a big extended version like The Lord of the Rings, that would be awesome. But I feel like there is so much they would have to cut in order to make this work. They would have to cut out so much time spent in Tarbien. They'd have to cut out a lot of the university. They're going to cut out a lot of time spent in the Aeolian. They're going to cut out a lot of the things that we think are are key moments of the series because it wouldn't fit well in a movie format. And don't get me wrong, I know every adaptation has to cut some things, but I think there's just a lot of key things that could easily be cut from the King Killer Chronicle that are actually really important. I would like to see a live action TV show, not a prequel. I want to see a live action TV show of the series that I love, and I think there's still going to be a lot of difficult things in in the production of that, but I I would like to see it. Hopefully, it would stay truer to the source content than the Wheel of Time show did, uh, but you know, I'm just hoping that it will be decent and that it will get more people to read these books. Anyway, those are my thoughts on a King Killer Chronicle adaptation. Until there's a published Doors of Stone, whenever that is, uh, I think all media projects are probably dead in the water, and I'm okay with that. I just want to see a third book finished before there's any type of adaptation. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments on what you want to see, and thank you guys for watching. I want to say a big thank you to everybody on Patreon, also everybody on Ko-Fi. If you like the videos I make and you want to help support the channel, those are both two options. All of that goes back into helping me make these videos more often, so thank you guys so much, and I'll see you next time.